What's up, Mike? Good morning. Welcome to this beautiful sunny day in McZena. I'm glad you are all here with us today. Just a few quick announcements. Uh, the Easter flower orders will, this is the last week to get them ordered. The orders are due by March 7th. Uh, talk with Beth Lackey, I believe, if you have any questions on that. The online daily Lenten devotions are still available on the church's Facebook page and YouTube accounts. This is, these are pre-recorded by several different pastors in our area. Um, if anyone is in need of pastoral care at this time, contact John Pooster or Joellen Zilko, and they will make arrangements to get you that pastoral care. Uh, also, there will be flower orders for our Relay for Life team that we will be taking through the month, month of March. They are the hanging baskets as we have done in the past. Um, and I also want to say a big thank you for everyone who supported the building fund with our Lurch's Donut Fundraiser. We sold 111 dozen donuts. That was a lot of donuts in one day. So thank you for that. Also, things coming up this week, uh, evening prayer, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on Facebook. Bible study will be Zoom on Mondays, and fellowship time Wednesdays at 7 p.m. also on Zoom. Our Sunday school is continuing to meet on Zoom at 9 a.m. on Sundays. And affirmation of baptism class will meet tonight on Zoom also.
Welcome. And isn't this fun? This is what I said the first when I walked in the church and I saw all these scowls from people, of course, who had took all the trouble and effort to set up and worship together as a community. This takes so much effort on the part of your church leaders and worship leaders and your effort to be here. I just want to say thank you. And please keep this congregation and those leaders in your prayers as you continue to struggle to worship God together as a community. I'm Pastor Beach Wigman, and as we begin worship, let's take a few moments of silence to prepare our hearts and minds. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close to Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. fountain of living water. Pour out our mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and the power of God, our sins are forgiven. And God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O oh God, by the passion of your beloved Son, you made an instrument of shameful death to be for us the means of life. Grant us so to glory in the cross of Christ that we may gladly suffer shame and loss for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 17, verses 1 through 7, 15 and 16. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I may make my covenant between me and you and may multiply you greatly. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but you shall be called Abraham, for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make you into nations, and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And God said to Abraham, as for your wife, wife Sari, you shall not call her name Sari, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become nations. Kings of people shall come from her. We will read our psalm responsibly. This is Psalm 22, verses 23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All of Jacob's line, give glory. 
Stand in awe of the Lord, all you offspring of Israel. For the Lord does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither in the Lord's face hidden from them. But when they cry out, the Lord hears them. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord, whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The second lesson comes from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verses 13 through 25. For the promise to Abraham and his offspring that he should be heir of the world did not come through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if it is the adherents of the law who are to be their heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, there is no transgression. That is why it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his offspring, not only to the adherent of the law, but also to the one who shares the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations in the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. In hope he believed against hope that he should become the father of many nations. As he had been told, so shall your offspring be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body which was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No unbelief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words, it was counted to him were not written for his sake alone but for ours alone it will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead jesus our lord who was delivered up for our trespasses trespasses and raised for our justification here ends the reading of the gospel in the 8th uh, chapter of Mark, beginning at the 31st verse. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and to be killed after three days rise again. He said to all of this quite openly. Peter took him aside Hold on. Back Turn it off your mic back. Son of humanity must undergo great suffering, 
and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribe, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the Gospels shall save it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Hi kids, good to see you. Today's gospel is about a cross, one of the things. And, and this is a cross, you've probably seen this in your church sometime. And this is something that we don't usually see outside of church settings. And I would invite you this week to count the number of times you see this cross. My guess is you'll find them in nature, too, if you look. Now, you'll notice that the cross has a part that goes up and down and a part that goes this way. And in the church service, you'll see some folks go, it's called making the sign of the cross. And we do this to remember Jesus, to remember that he died on the cross, but also that this cross is empty. And you'll notice that when you make the sign of the cross, it crosses the center that's right at your heart. So during the service, when you see people do this, please join me as we remember that Jesus died for us and the cross is empty. lesson from Genesis reminds us that Jesus used senior citizens for ministry, even though they were probably planning on retirement. Last week, God used Noah and his family to construct an ark, gather and collect all the animals and all the plants, put them in the ark, and then move the world to another living place and start all over again. This was a covenant that God made with the people. Remember, a covenant is a promise between God and people. And that covenant lasts forever. If, we read, if I read the scriptures correctly, Noah was about 600 years old when this happened. Now, in today's gospel, God uses Abraham, who is 99, and Sarah, who is a mere 90, for the same covenant. And this certainly was for youngsters by biblical standards. Just the other day, I heard a story about another 90-year-old couple. A couple in their 90s went to see their doctor, and the doctor proclaimed them in good physical health, but their memory was slipping a bit. So that she recommended that they start taking a list to write down things so they remember them. Well, that night, they were watching Jeopardy, and the man got up and said, would you like something from the kitchen? And the wife responded, I'd like some ice cream. Don't you think you should write that down so you don't forget? No, I'll remember. Oh, and I'd like some strawberries on it. Don't you think you should write that down, that I want strawberries? Nope, I'll remember. Could you put a little bit of whipped cream on that? Now, I'm sure you're going to need to write that down. No, he said, irritated. I will remember. You want ice cream, strawberries, and whipped cream. 
After about 20 minutes, as he was wrestling around in the kitchen, he brought back a plate of eggs and bacon. She stared at the plate and said, you forgot my eggs. It happens, but God can still use older adults for ministry. God's covenant with Abraham and Sarah was to make a great nation with many descendants. Now, if you remember, Sarah and Abraham were childless. God told Abraham <clears throat> to tell Sarah she would give birth to a son, bless her, and give rise to a nation. Sarah and Abraham were given the same covenant to create nations with many people. I would have loved to have been in the room when Abraham shared this conversation with Sarah. Uh, Sarah, my darling wife, just had a little conversation with God. And God said, you're going to have a baby and be a blessing. It'll be a son. And the son will make great a great nation. I think it would either be tons of laughter. And Sarah said, oh, Abraham, you are so funny. A conversation with God, me having a kid. Or Sarah would say, are you nuts? You didn't have a conversation with God. God would never say that to a 90-year-old woman. The plans for the rest of their lives had completely changed. In today's gospel, the plans for Peter's life changed dramatically, too. In the verse before today's gospel, Peter finds out that Jesus is the Messiah. So I wonder if he's thinking, hey, this is great. I'm in with the in crowd, and I'm going to have a great house, great car, good-looking car, successful servants. It'll be great, because I'm in with the in crowd. But that radically changed when Jesus said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind on human things, not on divine things. We're told that all the disciples heard this, and then he said this to the crowd, If you want to be my follower, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. I think this verse is one of the most misinterpreted verses of the Bible. Let's break it down. First, if we want to follow Jesus, we need to deny ourselves. The crowds came to hear Jesus looking for hope, looking for love. And now they heard they had to deny themselves when they didn't even have enough food to eat. The words of these meanings that deny themselves might be found in the following verse. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake, Jesus' sake, and the sake of the gospel, will save it. We might think saving our lives means accumulating wealth, a grand church building, success in academics or sports or music, we may believe these are our doing. This false belief may be that saving our lives means no suffering. When we believe our lives are our doing, we're losing our life. We have lost what Jesus desires for us. Jesus does not want us to suffer poverty, war, or hunger. Jesus wants life for us. So we save our lives when we acknowledge that our life is much fuller when we believe our blessings are from God. These blessings from God can be shared to be blessings for others. Jesus 
changed our plans. When our culture said, what our culture said is success. Successful followers of Jesus will save our lives when our relationships with people are more important than things. In my retirement, I created a ministry called Manager Memories and Messes. It's a free service for seniors who need help decluttering, donating, and organizing their household items. And myself and volunteers come in because maybe their kids live away, or maybe they've lived in their house for 60 years and they have no clue where to begin. But we're not professional organizers. Our focus is to listen to the stories that come out after we find something that they haven't seen for years. And we listen to the story that this thing brings forth. The thing isn't what is important. It's the memory. And the memory always involves people. Let me be clear, to deny ourselves doesn't mean hating us, punishing us, or discounting ourselves. God does not make junk, and each one of, this is, uh, one of us is important to God. Every part of God's creation is important. Second, if we want to be followers of Jesus, we have to take up our cross. The key word here is your. Jesus is your cross. We don't take up Jesus' cross. That has already been done. Jesus' cross is empty. How many times have we heard, oh, that's just my cross to bear? We are not required to suffer or to carry a heavy load. That is not God's desire. In our lives, yes, we will suffer and we'll need to sacrifice. For us, the cross may be the loss of an income, the death of a loved one, missing our friends, our family, our loneliness. When we focus on Jesus' empty cross, our cross is always carried by God. It is God's covenant with us and is never broken. Martin Luther said, a religion that gives nothing, costs nothing, and suffers nothing, means nothing. The shape of the cross gives us a symbol of being followers of Jesus. The horizontal is meant to be our relationships with people. And the vertical is meant to be our relationship with God. It is in the center where ministry begins and happens. It is at the center of God and people. We can't be up here just with God, nor can we be out here just with people. It's when we connect God and people that we're followers of Jesus. John Douglas Hall says it more clearly in his book, Why Christian? Quote, resurrection doesn't cancel out the cross. It does something much better than that. It reveals the truth that God is present in the cross, in Jesus' cross, and in all crosses, in whatever they may be. Christian hope lies at the center of the cross. Third, to be followers of Jesus, Jesus said, follow me. To follow Jesus means to let him be our leader. Let Jesus lead. It means following his example by having our lives focused on him. It means for you, as you're in this transition of calling a new pastor, always reflecting about where is Jesus leading us right now. Not what do I want, but where is Jesus in us? Suffering may be a part of following Jesus, and that may mean living in the center of the cross. 
and, and it's not meant to be a burden, it's meant to be freeing, knowing we're not alone. We need to let Jesus be in the driver's seat. When we read Jesus' story, we see a leader. And these are some of the things this leader did. He ate with friends, prayed, traveled depending on the hospitality of others. He taught lessons of hope using stories, made people feel physically and emotionally well, included people who were excluded, got angry, knew his Bible, the Torah, suffered, and defied death. He lived this life because he followed God. Jesus let God be the leader. In our lives, I'm sure we have experienced and continue experience the example of many leaders, some we like and some we don't. During this Lenten season, I invite you to reflect on which leaders would you follow? When we let Jesus lead our lives, we can pass that love and compassion and justice on to others. By following Jesus, we can lead like Jesus in our homes, schools, churches, and community. We are never too young or too old to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow Jesus. It is life changing. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. In Jesus, your reign has come near to us at every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Be with our bishops, Elizabeth and Laura. Lord, in your mercy. You have made a covenant of mercy with every living creature. Protect all the earth's people creatures from destruction. Send favorable weather to our crops. Lord, in your mercy. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. Direct the words and actions of leader in our community and throughout the world that they may obtain justice for the moment. We pray for those who serve in our military, especially Toby, Kyle, Larry, Tyler, Brendan, Jonah, Audrey, and Jack. Lord, in your mercy. Even in the wilderness, you are with those. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those who feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially Sue and Ed, Brittany, Brian, Dorothy, Larry and Roseanne, Sue, Rachel, Holly and Nora, Sharon, Susan, Carl, Kathy, Helen, Amber, Rebecca, Bob, healthcare workers, long-term care workers and residents, Pastor Sherry, Patty, Tim, and Jackie, Ginny, Fred, Andy, Nick and Shirley, Colin, Joe, Fred, Pat, Lee, Jenny and Kyle, Rebecca, Kathy, Bill, Trevor, Robert, Janet, Richard, Dick, Connie, Dr. Barry, Marion, Veronica, Veronica and Bill, Julie, Margaret, Kathleen and family, Caden, Dwayne, Chris, Betty, and Larry, Joy, Steve, Marilyn, and for those we name in our hearts before you. Yes. 
Lord, in your mercy, you are fair. For everyone who is longing to a new life and for those who are expecting a baby, especially Seth and Sabrina and family, and Brian and Brooke. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In baptism, you join us in death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. We praise you for all those who have died, trusting in your faithfulness, especially the family and friends of Heather, Neil, Adam, Kay, Marvin, Steve, Merle, Jack, Alice, Gideon, Stephanie, Harry, Harry Dawn, Sean, and Ed. Bring us with them to the fullness of your reign. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We entrust ourselves and all to your prayers, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Honk your horns, turn on your light. Great. We really ask you to remember your offering, your monetary gifts to this congregation so it can keep worshiping God in this community. The donation box is in as you enter the door or do it by email. Amanda. Faithful God, you walk beside us in deserted places and meet us in the hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give us thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy the Paschal Feast that renews in the gift of baptism. We may come to the fullness of your grace. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember. In the same way, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it for all to drink and said, In this cup, is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. We pray as our Lord taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. We share the body of Christ, we share the blood of Christ.
faith confessing the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seed of Christ's teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the tasks of our everyday life we will face. Our faith ever sharing in love ever caring embracing god's children the whole human race with your feast you feed us with your light now lead us unite us as one in this life that we share then may all the living with praise and thanksgiving, give honor to Christ in his name that we bear. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen to be holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing. In the name of the Holy Trinity, amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.